One of the most important decisions that you can make when choosing your league starter is not only the build that you choose, but also choosing your league start atlas strategy. Most builds in Path of Exile are gonna need some form of currency to be able to make them work. And there have been some pretty massive changes to a lot of the mechanics that are popular early on in the league. With some of these mechanics getting pretty massive overhauls. In this video, we're gonna go over most of the changes that happen with the atlas, including keystone changes, what's been happening with scarabs, as well as planning your initial atlas tree at the very start of the league. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and without further ado, let's get into it. So starting out, we have what I think is one of the more impactful changes in this whole refresh of the Atlas, and that's going to be that it is significantly easier to target farm specific mechanics now. Previously, you have to use Scarabs or Sextants or, you know, you would just have a chance to be able to get certain league mechanics. However, on the new Atlas, you are going to be able to, for the most part, force any kind of mechanic that you want. For example, let's look at Legion. These Legion nodes down here, Monumental, now give 16, 8, 8, and 8% 8 chance here. This is a lot of chance to have a Legion spawn in your map. And if we look at the other Legion nodes, you'll notice that there's these small nodes spread throughout. It's not in every single node, but a lot of these nodes have this chance to spawn more of the League mechanic. You'll notice it spread throughout pretty much every single one of them. Now, this is important because these nodes being spread out means that if you want to guarantee these League mechanics, you really do need to invest in most of the nodes. Because once this builds up to 100%, you're pretty much guaranteed in every single map to be able to have that League mechanic. What this ends up meaning is that strategies where you're just alking a map and going and not worrying too much about anything else, especially early on in the League, will be much more consistent. You'll see the same exact mechanics every single map and you'll be able to learn them a little bit faster, get through them a little bit more consistently and probably have a little bit better time with profits. Now, if you're a very high-end player, this probably isn't going to be too big of a deal for you, but for more casual players who just really like to get into maps and just, you know, run some content, do a couple of things, make some currency, play their build and have some fun, this is a pretty massive change. Now, on top of all of this, master missions are now part of their, like, respective league mechanic. What I mean by that is that master missions just simply don't exist anymore. The masters can all show up in the same map if you, you know, spec into all of their points and the points on the tree will just give you a chance for these masters to spawn. So you'll see you can get 40% chance to spawn Alva here just from these points here. And if we look at the other nodes, there's going to be some chance to have Alva in all of these different areas here. So if you go out and you get all of the incursion nodes, you'll be seeing Alva with you pretty much every single map. This is the same for Einhar and Nico and everything else. So if you prefer a very particular Atlas strategy and you really disliked having to do master missions or having to get sextants to be able to see those masters all the time, now you can invest into those on your Atlas tree and just focus on that as your league start. At this point, you can pretty much do any mechanic that you want on league start now. Choose the ones that you like that kind of fit pretty well together and you can make some serious currency. Another big bonus that we're getting is that we are going to have access to multiple Atlas trees now. We don't exactly know how these are going to be unlocked and such, but from what I remember, I think it's either like progressing through your Atlas or doing like tier 17 maps or something like that. It's higher in content that unlocks this. But what this is going to allow you to do is that if you ever had that situation when you're mapping and you just get kind of tired of the mechanic that you're doing, you want to swap to something else, or maybe the mechanic that you're doing is not profitable anymore, or even worse, you start a second character and that character is just terrible at what your current atlas is set up for. So you have to spend a hundred plus of the atlas respec orbs and that just like drains all of your currency and it's just kind of like, well, time to quit for the league, I don't want to do this anymore. Now you'll be able to have up to three is apparently what we're going to be getting. So some things that this does is it makes it significantly easier to have complementing strategies. If say you want to spend some time farming some scarabs and then using those scarabs afterwards, you can swap between those two trees without having to go and purchase things from other people. I know a lot of people really dislike the idea of having to purchase, you know, mapping tools from other players, or maybe if you like playing in solo cell found, this is a huge buff for that. And as I said previously, you can have a basic 
Atlas Tree for those new characters that don't get obliterated by a crazy in-game setup. You can either have it be like mostly blank or just have some very, very basic nodes like strong boxes or something like that, or maybe some shrine nodes or something just to give your character a little bit of an extra boost and level up a little bit faster. And it's gonna help break up that monotony of farming the same exact thing forever and feeling like I really don't wanna spend like a hundred plus Atlas respect points to be able to play something else. This will make it quite a bit easier to freshen up whatever you're doing. One of the largest changes to the Atlas that we've gotten is keystones have been swapped up a lot. In particular, Wandering Path is gone. Now, if you're familiar with kind of like speedrunning strategies early on in the league, you might have seen these getting real popular in recent time, where you basically just gun it for Wandering Path, get a whole bunch of nodes that make it so that a single mob in your map is guaranteed to drop a connecting map. Those strategies are pretty much gone. If you're curious as to what I'm talking about, this is the current 3.23 Atlas. And what you would normally do is you'd come up here through the middle, you could take these Kirik mission nodes here that give you a chance to grant an additional Kirik mission, and then you'd rush right up here to Wandering Path. What Wandering Path does is it doubles the effect of these little small nodes, and then you would fill out these nodes that say chance for one monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map. You would just get a ton of these, and eventually, when you got as many as you possibly could, you would get up to 100% chance for a monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map, allowing you to just zoom through your atlas and get it completed extremely quickly. And well, in 3.24, Wandering Path is completely gone. Now, there are these nodes down here that will still give you 2% chance for one monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map. However, you're not going to be able to get that full 100%. I, I'm not even sure if it's possible, even if you put every single point in at this point. And on top of that, these nodes in the middle of the tree that used to give you chance to duplicate a map have been changed into increased scarabs found in your maps. What this is gonna mean for very early league is that if you're an SSF, there's a chance that you might have a little bit of a slower start getting through your initial atlas clear. There's not really a ton that you can do about this besides just taking a lot of these map nodes early on and hoping that the Kirik missions and such can kind of sustain you through. In Trade League, you can still take these map nodes, like they're still good. Tier one through 15 maps have a 5%, 5% and like 15% on these large nodes to be one tier higher. These nodes are fine. However, if you're in Trade League, I do highly suggest that you simply buy the maps that you need to be able to get those first two watch zones because as soon as you get those first two watch zones it's significantly easier to sustain your atlas and just cruise through tier 16s all the way through however early on you can use these nodes you can use the kirak mission nodes and such to be able to get a little bit of a buffer if you're an ssf or if you really don't like trading for maps now i do think that ggg might rebalance map drops slightly but you can never trust this sometimes they make it harder sometimes they make it less difficult and a lot of the time, I think they just don't change anything and RNG just kind of impacts how your initial running through the Atlas goes. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to have that guaranteed easy cruise through maps, which is a little bit sad in my opinion. I really liked doing the Wandering Path strat, but it looks like it's gone, so we're going to have to adapt from here. However, Grand Design is gone. If you didn't know what Grand Design was, essentially it got rid of the effect of all small Atlas passives, and it made it so that the large notable ones give you 1% increased pack size per one of those allocated, meaning that you could just spam a huge amount of pack size in your maps, get a bunch of enemies in there. It was useful for a couple of different strategies, but notably, that keystone is completely gone now. One other thing that you might notice if you are a little bit astute here is that all of the Uber Boss keystones are gone. This is a change that I have been asking for for quite a long time now. You might remember a video from a while back how I was complaining about the current situation with Uber Bossing, and they took like 90% of what I said in that video and just straight implemented it, which I'm super happy about. The 10% that they did change is actually a pretty massive change and a very good idea that I didn't think of at all. The way that this is gonna work now is that T17 maps are now going to be able to drop, and those T17 maps are kinda gonna be like an in-between when it comes from uber bossing and normal pinnacle bossing. The bosses in between are gonna be pretty difficult. You can't modify the mods on these tier 17 maps that drop. And as far as I know, there is five particular ones and they all have pretty powerful boss fights that drop their own new unique items. And if you don't want to play a bosser and you don't think that you're gonna be very good at these like tier 17 maps or these like pinnacle bosses and stuff, you can still just sell them back and buy whatever you want. However, the idea behind the uber boss keystones is that in these tier 17 
17 maps, they're going to be dropping little fragments that allow you to go to a separate uber boss fight that has separate loot. This means that early on in the league, say you were a person who really liked to do boss farming, but you were never really proficient enough to be able to do those ubers. There's a chance that you can now farm some normal pinnacle bosses and maybe make a little bit of currency from it because the pinnacle bosses drop separate loot now. From some of the normal pinnacle bosses, the more basic loot, like say if we talk about Shaper, for example, like Dying Sun, the flask or the gloves or things like that, those kinds of items will drop from the normal version of the pinnacle boss. Whereas the big boy items like the Sublime and um, like Star Forge and things like that are only gonna drop from the Uber. But those two keys being split means that people can actually farm the normal versions of the bosses without going into debt. Like this league, I'm pretty sure, the Maven entrance fee was like three to five divine. That's insane. Most people aren't even going to want to ever fight the Maven because it's like, well, I've got the Maven, you know, invite. Uh, I'm just gonna sell this. There's no way I'll make three divine from fighting her, right? This change, Massively positive change, one of the best changes I've seen. Very, very, very good. I'm very happy about this. The next thing, and this is also a very good change, is that Seventh Gate is gone. If you didn't know what Seventh Gate is, it is a node that's here in the middle that says all possible league map crafting options are available while six gateways are allocated. Something that GGG has been trying to embrace, and Mark was kind of talking about this in the interview and such, is that if everyone feels like they have to make the decision to be able to compete, that doesn't actually make it a decision. It's just a guaranteed thing that has to happen. Seventh Gate kind of felt this way a lot of the time, because if you really did want to farm essences and it wasn't on the map device, you had to take Seventh Gate because essences being on the map device is a huge bonus compared to it not. So what's happened now is that Seventh Gate is gone, which is fine, but all Kyrick options are unlocked as you progress your Atlas now. So you're just able to have anything you want on the mapping device now. Super good change, really happy about it, and you'll be able to farm whatever you want. You can make currency doing pretty much whatever you want now. You don't have to worry about doing some weird stretching the Atlas shenanigans with the gateways anymore either. Two more keystones that have been removed are growing hordes in all hands. These have been removed as master missions aren't a thing anymore so there's no reason to have them and the scarabs are going to be a much more integral part of actually juicing your maps now so you don't need that keystone either the scarabs are kind of going to be replacing sextants you're no longer going to be rolling sextants or buying sextants or doing all of that if you want these very powerful effects that you're going to have on your maps you're now going to be using scarabs only for that and the way that you will generically juice your atlas is just going to be by putting these points in like say if you really wanna have Legion nodes, you're gonna come through here, you're gonna grab all of the Legion stuff, right? Like you're going to, if I can actually click this properly, you're gonna grab these nodes here, you'd come over and you'd grab like Legion nodes here, you'd grab the Legion nodes that are up here, you'd grab the Legion nodes that are over here. It's gonna guarantee the Legion to be in your map, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of bonuses, and then you can use some of those scarabs to be able to modify those legions in particular ways, maybe add more of them or make more generals show up or more boxes show up or anything like that. It's gonna be a lot of the same effects that you're used to up to this point. However, most of them are going to be centralized within the scarabs now instead of being on sextants and all kinds of other weird places to get stuff. Now, notably, there is a lot of investment into scarabs that's available on the tree, and I will talk about scarabs in a moment. However, there is a particular keystone that is called Unwavering Vision. I actually really like the name of this keystone, it's kind of funny. There is a chance, I think it's a small chance, but there is a chance that scarab farming in general might not be worth it. If that is the case, something like this keystone will actually be pretty powerful. As it says, your maps cannot be modified by fragments other than divine vessels. Scarabs cannot be found in your maps which these are the new main mapping type currency that you're going to be looking for. So I think these are going to be very impactful, but in the chance, the small chance that they're not, 20 additional Atlas passive skill points seems pretty good to me, especially if you don't really want to deal with having to buy scarabs or use scarabs or worry about any of that kind of stuff. You can just Alcan go, forget about all of the fragments and just get a bunch of extra Atlas passives and see the content that you want to see. Probably lower reward, but a lot more brain off if that's what you want to have. The next thing to talk about here is Twist of Fate. 
This is a keystone, if I can find it over here on the left, which says your corrupted rare maps and any map crafting options applied to them are modified unpredictably when opened. This means they're just going to be randomized. And it gives you maps modified in this way have one to three additional random map modifiers. So if you're not aware, corrupted maps now are no longer going to be able to go um, unidentified because you're going to be able to identify corrupted items now. And now corrupted maps are going to have new implicit modifiers that do interesting or powerful things. So so if you have a build that can run essentially any map mod whatsoever and they're not really dangerous to you whatsoever and you don't really care about the map crafting option that you're going to be using, this could be a really powerful effect because three additional random map modifiers is going to add a ton of quantity, a ton of rarity, and a ton of pack size to all of your maps. Potentially really powerful but also potentially very dangerous. Now, if you are upset about Wisps leaving, I do have this thorough exploration node, which is extremely dangerous in my opinion. But um, what it says is that if there are fewer than 50 monsters remaining in your maps, final map bosses are empowered by Wildwood Wisps. This is going to be for people who are doing strategies where you really are mapping for more single target damage. One particular thing that I'll talk a little bit about later is that essences are kind of changing fundamentally. This is one of the bigger changes that's happening to the Atlas. And you are going to need a lot more single target damage to be able to properly farm essences now. So if you do a lot of single target damage and you want to do some kind of setup where, say you go into a map that's very linear, very straightforward, something like beach or um, atoll or something like that so you can get maybe some harvests in there you can get your essences in there and then you fight the boss and get out very quickly something like this could be extremely powerful because these wisps when they empower monsters make them drop a ton of extra loot so be wary of this it could be extremely dangerous. If you played this league, you played Affliction League, you know how powerful some of these like triple empowered like Wildwood Wisp bosses can be. They can beat you up. So be very careful here, but potentially a lot of loot if you're going to be doing a big bossing strategy. Now we have an entire section here on Scarabs, and this is because like I said previously, Scarabs are changing fundamentally. And I do think that these Scarab nodes should be quite strong because this is the new main mapping like currency. Scarabs are going to be the thing that you use to modify your experience while you're mapping that does all of these crazy powerful effects. If we quickly look here in the Necropolis page that shows us some of the different scarabs and such that we can have, you'll see that a lot of these scarabs do very powerful things now. We've got area contains a mirror of delirium, contains an, an ultimatum encounter, you're going to get grants two additional rounds worth of rewards, like the ultimatum encounters will always lead to a unique boss if possible. There's a lot of really crazy stuff here, in particular divination scarabs as well. This is one massive change that's happening with scarabs in that you can now target farm where you want to get your divination cards from, but get them in pretty much any map that you like. And you can use this one, for example, this is divination cards that drop an area, have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead. It's that divination card that drops in outdoor sunny areas that gives you like, what is it, like one tenth of a divine or something like that. Imagine that you do have a strategy where you just have a bunch of those outdoor sunny maps, all favored, so you're getting like 100% more divination cards. And then you can also on top of that, just potentially get a full stack at any given time. There's a lot of potential for these new scarabs to be insanely powerful. There's all kinds of cool strategies that you can think up here. That's just some of the like basic ones that I think of off the top of my head. A lot of potential with this new scarab system. And because of that, these scarab nodes should be extremely powerful. You should be able to get a lot of currency, a lot of effectiveness out of them. And one of the main reasons for this is that if you look here in the middle of the Atlas, you'll notice that they have these nodes that say scarabs dropped in your maps are 100% more likely to be whatever kind of scarabs you're looking to get. And there's ones for pretty much any kind of scarab. I do think that you should focus on getting the scarabs that you care more about using rather than just trying to go for the ones that are worth the most at any given time. This is a personal thing, and it's mainly because trading does take up a lot of your time and it does take up a lot of your like mental energy for playing the game. And I think personally that it feels much, much better to just be able to use the things that you find in maps to be able to do the content that you want instead of having to like 
trade giant sacks of currency constantly to be able to have the ones that you want at any given time. If you're farming in massive bulk with very rare scarabs or something like that, it obviously makes sense to do it that way. But if you're going to farm the scarabs themselves, Get the ones that you care about having for your own atlas so that you don't need to go and do a bunch of trading. So now talking about some of these scarab nodes, I do think that these are not all equal. I think that there are some that are much better than other ones. For example, in the list of good nodes that I've got here, I've got skittering swarms, the more types of scarab nodes that you can see here, and amplified artifacts. So starting off with skittering swarms, 12%, 4%, 4% for just a total of 20% increased scarabs found in your map. Pretty obviously good if you're just wanting more scarabs to be found, if you're just trying to farm more scarabs, having just generically more of them is almost assuredly going to be good. These more type nodes, you'll be able to focus on the types of scarabs that you want to get. There is a chance, depending on how scarab drops actually happen, that these nodes may not be good, but almost assuredly, if you're farming your own scarabs or farming scarabs in general, you're going to want them to be the better type of scarab most of the time, right? So these kind of make sense to take, and they're towards the middle of the atlas, which tends to have a lot of powerful nodes on it. The last node in the good nodes list, I think, is going to be amplified artifacts. Rare monsters in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. Now, notably and notoriously, increased chance to drop scarabs can be pretty bad. However, monsters can have like three or four modifiers on them, and if you're up in this area of the Atlas anyways and taking some Scarab nodes, up to like 200% increased chances to drop any generic Scarab is pretty good. Most of the time you find the vast majority of your loot from these big giant rare monsters. So this on average should be a pretty powerful node. And then before that, you're just going to be getting, of course, more Scarabs once again. Next in the possibly good list. There are a few in here that I think have some pretty crazy potential in certain setups. The first one being significant troves. It says unique monsters in your maps have 200% increased chance to drop scarabs. This should be good in particular with rogue exiles. So I know there are some like new anarchy slash rogue exile um, scarabs that are going to be existing. However, if we look at rogue exiles in general, you'll notice there are quite a few good nodes that make you just spawn a bunch of rogue exiles, right? So this one has like 20% chance to be accompanied by two rogue exile bodyguards. They have additional rewards. And then you've got nodes like this where it's called <laughs> Ruckus, where it's like your maps have an 8% chance to contain 20 additional rogue exiles. There's a pretty big chance that out of those 20 additional rogue exiles, if you also have this node that makes it so that you unique monsters have an increased chance to drop scarabs and then you get more scarabs there's a pretty good chance that you're going to get quite a few from these maps and then beyond that there is this note up here that is called chittering champions it says final map boss in each map has a 25 percent chance to drop an additional scarab if you are getting a hundred percent more chance to get like a certain kind of scarab or a couple different certain kinds of scarab and you are doing some kind of like boss rushing strategy where you're really focused on just getting through the map killing the boss and getting out one out of four bosses always dropping some kind of scarab could be pretty lucrative especially if you're just zooming through constantly over and over and over again turning over as many maps as you can get with a really really fast build this could be a lot of money in that circumstance the reason i put it impossibly good is because you're really going to need to specifically focus on that kind of strategy now in the likely bad section i only have one here and the reason that i call it likely bad is because it says remarkable relics it says scarabs found in your maps are more likely to be less common varieties just because something is less common doesn't necessarily mean it's good this doesn't give us any kind of indicator of how much more likely or anything it's very random very rng and most of the time when you see these kind of modifiers they tend to not be very good now I could be wrong here, and the reason, and that's the reason that I call it likely bad. This could be super omega overpowered if the less common varieties are all good, but typically knowing GGG and how they balance like rarity tiers and things like this, this doesn't always mean that it's going to be good. So overall, I think that Scarabs could be extremely powerful. I really like the way that they implemented this new system. Seems super, super cool. Way less annoying to deal with like having to do sextants and having to roll master missions and having to like you know all, all this extra crazy stuff now you just throw some scarabs on your map and you go and you don't worry about it and you can go buy those scarabs in bulk right off of the trade website you don't have to go and do any weird giant list of sextants that you're buying from tft or anything else you can just go and get them off the trade website and not worry too much about it now there is one other league mechanic that i do want to talk about and that's going to be essences the reason i want to particularly go in depth that i think that they've changed 
pretty fundamentally here. These got more changes than most of the rest of the other league mechanics that are available on the Atlas. And I want to go over a couple of those things. First off, white map essences are now limited to screaming essences. This is because people were farming like super low tier white maps and just zooming through them and trying to stack up a bunch of essences. Now you can still do that, but it's significantly less powerful because you're only going to be able to get screaming essences. And now yellow and red maps can drop up to shrieking. What I think that this is going to be is that people are just now going to do like tier six maps and yellow maps to be able to do this kind of essence stuff. So it doesn't really completely nerf the strategy, just makes it a little bit harder. Like you have to be at least a little bit stronger to be able to do what you want to do. So that kind of nerfs a super impactful, like early game, easy farming strategy where you just do, you know, memories or things like that in super low tier maps. You don't have to worry about any of that because all the enemies are just going to be super easy. Now you're going to need to do it in a little bit higher tier of maps. Next thing to talk about is amplified energies. This does guarantee one essence of the highest tier on each one of your imprisoned monsters. So now you are guaranteed to get one of those Shrieking Essences on every single monster. This also means that every single monster is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but this should contribute to a little bit more consistent currency throughout, and it will scale with how many Essences that you have in your map at any given time. So more Essences are gonna mean more of these Shrieking Essences that are going to be in your maps. Now let's talk about the big one. This is the change that I think fundamentally uh, modifies essence in a pretty large way and that's going to be the new crystal resonance node so this node does quite a bit more than you might be able to see at first glance so the first line says a map boss is granted a random essence modifier from any imprisoned monsters slain in your maps from what i'm reading here this leads me to believe that anytime you kill an essence mob one of those random essences is going to be duplicated onto the boss for each essence mob that you kill. So if you kill five different essence mobs in your map, those five random essences, one from each of them, are going to also copy onto the boss, making the boss extremely difficult as well. So if you're doing some kind of like boss rushing strategy or like essence harvest farming where you're doing a lot of single target damage and not worrying too much about clear this could be extremely lucrative but you better be able to kill that boss pretty easily you might want to do a map like a toll where the boss is kind of a pushover and you don't need to worry too much about it because just imagine having some really dangerous boss like i don't know burial chambers <laughs> with like six essence mods on it or something like that if you want to try to kill that good luck but i'm not going to do anything like that that seems like a nightmare and then we've got the second line here which says using remnants of corruption on imprisoned monsters in your maps replaces all essences with one of the essences on the imprisoned monster now i am slightly assuming here but what I'm thinking that this node does is it makes it so that, you know how when you normally use a Remnant of Corruption, you have a chance to upgrade to some of those highest tier unique type essences? I think that this removes the chance for that to happen. And instead, it takes one of the random essences that you have on there and just duplicates it across. So if, say, you have like a Shrieking Essence of Misery on an on a Essence Mob and like four or five other random essences, there's a chance that it could target that Shrieking Essence of Misery and just give you five or six Shrieking Essences of Misery on the same exact mob. That's what I'm assuming that this means. I'm not 100% certain because the wording here is a little strange, but that's what I am assuming from here. So that means that Essences are changing pretty drastically. The last Essence node is pretty much the same, or the last two. Prolific Essences, you just have an additional Essence and uh, Crystal Lattice. There's just 15% chance to have three additional essences on any of your essence mobs. So yeah, some, some pretty big changes are happening to essence. So be wary of that in your early league farming. And that is gonna be it for the video. Hopefully I was able to help you learn a little bit about what's changing with the new Atlas. Maybe this will spark some ideas in your head of strategies that you wanna go for. But like the TLDW, if you just want like a summary a little bit, is that it seems like you can farm most things on the Atlas now. You can get guaranteed chances to get pretty much any mechanic that you want at any given time. And that's pretty powerful for player agency and being able to have just choices to do what you want. Scarabs being the main mapping currency now that you can use for essentially everything and you don't need to worry about sextants, you don't need to worry about any of that extra like master missions or any of that garbage. Make it so that the barrier to entry to doing juice maps is way lower. It's just buy stacks of the four scarabs that you wanna use 
and go. And that's all that you have to worry about. So a bunch of good changes. I'm super excited to try out this new Atlas and get a bunch of new like currency strategies together and figure out how some of this new stuff works. Like essences look pretty insane for some kind of bossing character. You can probably still do things like essence harvest and make like a really powerful bossing character that just zooms through the map, does the harvest, kills the essences and kills the boss and maybe gets like an extra scarab or something from the boss. Should be a lot of fun. So remember boys, if you enjoy this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.